Thank you for attending this presentation about time of flight measurement with subsampling period resolution using software fan radio. The context of this investigation is uh, radar or more generally time of flight measurement using software fan radio. And uh, in this setup here, what you can see is uh, two X310 connected to four cables uh, linked on the roof of this building to antennas tuned to 143 megahertz, which is the frequency of the Grav radar, the French space surveillance radar, whose emitter is located about 30 kilometer from our location and in the context of distributed radar measurements we're interested in having these four channels of both X310 connected or clocked synchronized with these white rabbit switches white rabbit is a ptpv2 protocol for synchronizing over computer network with synchronization so frequency tuning of each switch and so between these two white rabbit switches there's a few kilometers of optical fiber which uh, improves the uh, azimuth resolution of such a distributed radar system and if we have a quick look at the GNU radio flow chart that is running here what we can see is uh, the frequency offset uh, introduced by a Doppler shift Grav radar is a continuous wave radar at 143 megahertz so actually the frequency offset happens to be the speed of a target these are live planes flying over our location and here I emphasize the benefit of having a high stability oscillator here we are clocked on hydrogen maser for these two uh, X310s and this X310 has been tuned to be running on its internal uh, quartz oscillator and you see here the frequency offset between the quartz oscillator and the hydrogen maser. On the plot here you've got the various frequency offset introduced by the various planes flying over our location. We are located over here, Grav radar is somewhere over here and all these planes have been flying overhead each one of these turns being uh, one of these uh, angle on the chart uh, leading to a shape different from the out tangent uh, expected from a straight flight so this is uh, our context of application and the question we're asking is whether we will be able to improve the range resolution under the assumption of a broadband uh, radar signal beyond the uh, time interval, sampling time interval. Indeed, under software defined radio receiver condition, we assume we have a continuous stream at sampling frequency FS, so that the time interval between two measurements is TS, and the radar range equation tells you that the uh, inverse of the bandwidth define the uh, resolution with which the time of flight can be measured simply because we have a two-way trip so one half of the inverse of the bandwidth multiplied by the speed of flight c 300 meter per microsecond gives you the resolution with which you can identify a target range now by using various processing techniques and under some assumption on the signal shape can we improve the time of flight measurement beyond this uh, sampling period ts Of course, if we're asking the question, chances are that we're going to be able to answer positively. And what you're seeing here is a simulation, numerical simulation, where we generate the pseudo random sequence, removed the mean value, and we spread the information with adjacent samples by using a convolution so that the pseudo random sequence, whose correlation should be a Dirac function, is spreading information on the 30 adjacent samples. And then we do a correlation between the reference signal and the time of set signal uh, with uh, index m with m equal 1 to 6 so you here have a spreading of information adjacent samples we do the correlation and so you might have always a correlation peak at the same location because of a spreading but you see from the shape of a correlation peak if we zoom into here into this correlation peak we see that the shape will be changing and will allow us to have much better accuracy on the time delay than just one set sampling period. And actually what we can show is that the improvement on the time delay resolution is equal to a signal to noise ratio. So this is the basic of uh, improving of a super resolution measurement uh, by uh, trying to fit the correlation peak. Now spreading a spectrum which defines the 
uh, width of a correlation peak can be done in many ways. Uh, we can send a, a short pulse, which is a pulse radar. We can sweep the frequency either as steps, a frequency step radar, or by sweeping continuously, the FMCW radar. What I like here is a noise radar where a random sequence is generated and this random sequence is actually recorded on a reference channel when a surveillance channel, a measurement channel, is looking at time delayed copies of this reference channel. And here we will try to improve the resolution beyond the sampling period by using correlation. Now, here is an example of a measurement we've been running for a few years now, where we are measuring uh, DCF77 uh, broadcast from Germany uh, uh, PTB, and we are recording the time of flight with respect to GPS. Uh, the signal from uh, DCF77 is not only amplitude modulated uh, as your watch is decoding if you're living in Europe, but is also phase modulated. And this phase modulated signal uh, is spread over a bandwidth of about 700 hertz, so that you might have uh, something like a timer resolution of 1.5 milliseconds. What you actually see here is uh, on this uh, long-term measurement, we have much better than 1.5 milliseconds. And if we zoom into uh, one of these regions, you actually have the day and night uh, ionosphere fluctuations with a line width, which is about uh, 10 microseconds. So the uh, improvement over the 1.5 millisecond is 100-fold, which is about the signal-to-noise ratio of the uh, uh, received signal at a range of 400 kilometers, which is the distance between our location and DCF-77. So this is the experimental setup that will allow us to try to answer the question. We have our software-defined radio, uh, dual coherent input, that's very important aspect. It has to be a dual input uh, SDR, so we're investigating X310, B210, or as an example of a LIME microsystem 7002 from 10 fitted software-defined radio, the XTRX from Fairwaves. These two inputs will be fed the pseudo-random sequence number uh, that is uh, generated by a field programmable gate array, an FPGA, and this FPGA will be clocked by the same time and frequency source than the uh, X310, B210 software defined radio or XTRX. So this is our GNU radio flowchart with uh, one X310 or two X310s, both of which are feeding a file sync. So we end up having four files and we clock them with the external sources to make sure that it's indeed the same signal that is clocking the FPGA that is indeed clocking the X310 of the B210. Experimentally, this is what it looks like. So we've got our two software defined radio, which are explicited now, and uh, the two software defined radio here are fed through a series of splitter, the 70 megahertz output from the FPGA, which is a binary phase shift keying modulated, BPSK modulated with a pseudo random sequence. And because the FPGA cannot be fed a sine wave, we have a fast comparator that converts the 10 megahertz sine wave into a square wave feeding the clock of the FPGA. The distribution, the clock distribution and the 1PPS is either generated by an octoclock or by a small FPGA which is itself uh, generating the 10 MHz and 1PPS uh, using the counter as programmed by Gwen. If you're interested, you have a portable implementation for all these types of FPGA using uh, Amaranth language for describing such a pseudorandom sequence generator. Now, so the measurement we're doing is we are sampling at a rate of 5 mega samples per second, so 200 nanosecond sampling period, many times the signals from both channels, and we uh, fit the correlation peak to try to see how the uh, time delay fluctuates. Uh, so if we do a single channel measurement and we repeat the measurement multiple times, we see that within each measurement the fluctuation is very small, it's in the a few picosecond range, but from one measurement to the next one, the time delay fluctuates randomly within the sampling period. Remember, the sampling period is 200 nanoseconds, so here we see a random fluctuation in a few uh, tens of nanoseconds from one run to the other. 
if you look closely you will see two lines here and that's because when we run the measurement both channels are actually delayed the same amount we're going to discuss this later but from one measurement to the other this random delay fluctuates so on the b210 we can slightly see the two lines here on the x310 the two lines overlap and uh, this is only five measurements later we're going to repeat the measurement a thousand times but this is just to help you differentiate the various contributions on the experimental setup again where the FPGA output is bandpass filter around the uh, output frequency the carrier of the BPSK signal and split between the two inputs so the conclusion is we will not be able to use a single channel measurement and just before uh, switching to the next slide the improvement on the B210 is due to the fact that the B210 has a very complex radio frequency front end which integrates amplifiers the AD9361 and that allows us to use the full scale despite the 20 uh, dB loss of the surface acoustic wave filter whereas the X310 is fed directly the uh, A2D converter inputs here uh, the full scale range of the X310 is about 6 dBm and because of a 20 dB loss here we are much below full scale range of the A2D converter hence the lower performance of the X310 later we will add a few amplifiers uh, before the splitter here to use the full scale range of the X310 so now if we look at differential measurement where we compare one uh, uh, recording on one channel with respect to the other this time the uh, result is much better previously we had fluctuation in the tens of nanosecond now if you look at the y-axis here which is also graduating nanosecond this time the fluctuations this is uh, 20 picoseconds so now you see that from top to bottom over these five measurements with a hundred pico uh, picosecond uh, delay fluctuation we have an offset of about uh, 250 picoseconds from one channel with respect to the other and the standard deviation is about 40 picosecond now the b210 is fitted with this very complex radio frequency front end and uh, which might introduce some uncontrollable uh, delays from one measurement to another uh, we don't exactly know how all these analog and digital front ends are behaving so if we go to the uh, much simpler X310 because this time we only have an A2D converter sampling at 200 mega sample per second feeding the FPGA no radio frequency front end you see this time that the standard deviation is in the picosecond range as opposed to the few tens of picoseconds we had earlier so if you look from the maximum to the minimum we have about seven picoseconds uh, over these five measurements and interestingly enough in this experiment we had the exact exact same length of cable uh, between the splitter and the input of the X310 and uh, for experimenting we introduced one of these SMA right angle on one of the channel and not on the other now if you look closely here you see that we have a time delay initially of about 90 picoseconds and when we introduce the right angle here we, in, uh, we decrease to about 15 picoseconds which is over here so uh, we had a shift of time delay of about 75 picoseconds whether uh, the extension here is introduced or not now if you uh, consider that the speed of the electromagnetic wave in the quarks cable is about 66 percent of the speed in free space or 200 meter per microsecond then the 75 uh, picosecond delay lead to about 1.5 centimeter uh, additional length on one uh, length with respect to the other and 1.48 centimeter is not ridiculous with respect to this uh, computer assisted design model of the SMA connector where each length here is given as seven centimeters uh, seven millimeters adding to 1.4 centimeter if we generalize this measurement you see here the experimental setup with the X310 the FPGA pseudo random signal generator feeding the splitters and the amplifier uh, going to both inputs initially both inputs are equilibrated with the same length and we slowly add this one centimeter extension on one side of the uh, measurement channel and every time we add one of these extension we add uh, a few tens of picoseconds and what you see here is the delay difference as we are adding more and more SMA extensions the standard deviation is about uh, a fraction of a picosecond uh, what you see here uh, 5 10 to the minus 13 and if we consider that the sampling period was 200 nanoseconds uh, now we have improved uh, 
if we have here 5, 10 to the minus 13 standard deviation, then it means that we have improved 400,000 fold the timing resolution of the system. And that is due to the excellent signal to noise ratio of a wired connection as opposed to a wireless communication uh, from the FPGA to the inputs. And so it means that you can measure a few picosecond uh, by uh, using such a narrow band, if you want, a signal as 5 megahertz thanks to the signal to noise ratio improvement. Here we had one night uh, between the measurement, the first half of the measurement, the second half, and here we actually had three days emphasizing the reproducibility and the stability of this uh, experimental setup. Now that we're convinced that we can finally measure the time delay with much better than the uh, sampling period between two channels of the X310, uh, we might wonder whether it's actually needed to clock the X310 on the same reference as the FPGA. And what you see here is because now we're running the X310 on its external, internal oscillator, uh, you now have uh, a drift of one oscillator with respect to the FPGA because the frequency is different and the phase is the integral of the frequency and yet the two channels are seeing the same drift so that uh, at the end when we do a differential measurement we subtract one curve with respect to the other which was shifted for clarity we end up having a flat line and again we have a standard deviation of about a picosecond with some mean value which is over here and maximum minus minimum to minimum which is about two picoseconds so actually you don't need to reject the clock uh, the drift uh, by running the same oscillator uh, as we've seen earlier when we're running uh, this uh, radar what you might have seen here is that the frequency offset was due to the uh, frequency difference between the quartz and the uh, hydrogen maser but still if we're doing a differential measurement we will cancel this common mode frequency offset and we can finally tune uh, finally measure the time delay between both channels so this works nicely on a single uh, B210 or a single X310, we can do a differential measurement of one channel with respect to the other, but can we multiply uh, the receivers? The architecture that we're considering here is two X310 with two splitters, and uh, actually all channels inputs are fed the same pseudorandom sequence. Uh, I'll show in the conclusion that the practical application would be to have each X310 with one channel measuring the signal under investigation, the other channel recording the PRN sequence for synchronization, but in this case we are feeding all channels of all X310s with the same pseudorandom sequence. Now what you're seeing here is if we're doing a single channel analysis, as seen earlier, you will have a random distribution of the delays between something like 30 and 100 nanoseconds, and remember this is the sampling period of 200 nanoseconds, so from one measurement to the other, the measurement will just randomly start at some point between, in between the uh, sampling periods. If we do the differential measurement, here you see the overlap of all the 1000 measurements, so the thickness of a line tells you the reproducibility and on this chart we took the mean value of each one of these 15 second measurement and we plotted the time evolution so each one of these measurements lasts 15 seconds and for each 15 second we take an average and we plot here one measurement after the other so what you're seeing here is that on the short term within each measurement uh, each x310 the first one with channel 1 minus 2 or the second one with channel 3 minus 4 exhibits a sub picosecond standard deviation and so do uh, channel 1 to 3 which is one x310 with respect to the other x310 so uh, on a short duration of about 15, uh, 15 seconds the two x310s are behaving very similarly however from one measurement to the other so along this axis here we see that uh, each X310 individual, individually is exhibiting sub picosecond standard deviation, but when we compare one X310 with the other, we have a much thicker line, which is this 1.6 picosecond, which is still much, much below the sampling period, but you do see that by comparing one uh, X310 with respect to the other, rather than uh, the two channels within uh, an X310, we do degrade the performance. Um, now that we have looked at 2x310, we might wonder what's going to happen if we try to synchronize on the one hand 1x310 and on the other hand a b210 with the same layout with all four channels being fed the same pseudorandom sequence. Now this time what you see is that uh, within each uh, 
SDR if we compare one channel of the X310 with the other channel of the X310 or one channel of the B210 with respect to the other, ch other channel of the B210. Well, we come back to the same conclusion as earlier is that the B210 is degraded with respect to the X310 due to the uh, uncontrolled delay of the complex AD9361 front end. We can see his thesis or see this over here. So your standard deviation of the X310 is two picosecond, where the B210 is a few picosecond uh, standard deviation within each channel, within each measurement. However, when we repeat the measurement one after the other, what you see here is that uh, this curve here is a zoom on this region uh, when we compare B210 or X310 with each other, but the green curve is one channel of the B210 with respect to a channel of the X310. And in this case, you see that the fluctuations are basically random. Uh, we explain this by the fact that the clock uh, mechanism of the B210 and X310 are completely different and furthermore the communication scheme is also completely unrelated. Uh, one of them has an USB communication that will trigger the uh, acquisition when the other one is an Ethernet uh, communication. Also we don't know where the one PPS is sampled and uh, whether it's uh, before and after the PLL if, uh, if it's sampling the 10 MHz but then the 10 MHz is uh, multiplied by a phase locked loop then uh, the time delay uh, between the various channels of the two SDR will be completely different. So both messages uh, uh, and uh, um, synchronization, hand synchronization handling mechanism between being widely different, you see that it's impossible to synchronize a B210 and an X310 on what we've shown earlier, despite the fact that within the X310 or within the B210, both channels are nicely synchronized uh, from one measurement to the other. Finally, all these investigations have focused on analog device front-end or uh, no front-end at all for the X310. What about LIME microsystem? In this example, we're comparing the synchronization of an X310, uh, which is used always as reference, with an XTRX from Fairwaves with its LIME microsystem LMS 7002 front-end. And what you see here is that we have a much lower performance of the XTRX uh, LMS 7002. Uh, this time we have a few hundred picoseconds so the layout from GNU Radio Companion is to have uh, again the same uh, clock distribution that we had earlier using the octo clock, the same signal feeding all inputs, the UHD USRP uh, of the X310 feeding two files and the Osmocom source uh, driving the XTRX feeding the other two files. And what you see is actually that not only are the measurements uh, randomly distributed within the sampling period but actually the XTRX exhibits a much lower performance and this uh, 20 nanosecond value here uh, represents the fact that the uh, measurement, uh, the time delay between the two channels are just randomly uh, initialized. Now if we zoom and uh, cancel the initial offset saying that we run continuously the measurement and we can just remove initial offset, well still you see that the LMS 7002 is drifting over the 15 seconds so we are again overlying all these uh, measurements, all these successive measurements and what you see now is that uh, the XTRX is actually drifting uh, over 15 second measurement as opposed to the X310 which is extremely stable uh, during each one of the me measurements as, we, as we've seen earlier and of course because the XTRX is drifting if you're comparing an X310 with an XTRX you get something that is drifting as well and that will prevent uh, fine timing analysis uh, when you're using this line microsystem front end. So as a conclusion to this whole discussion, uh, we've been uh, discussing how to distribute a fine time information by using a spread spectrum technique, uh, recording on a reference channel of a software-defined radio receiver, uh, and uh, looking at the standard deviation of radio uh, time delay of various radio frequency front end. Our results are in compliance with uh, publications from the Japanese group that developed YY uh, for over-the-air uh, high-resolution synchronization uh, from NICT, and what you see here is a uh, copy of one of the publications of this group where they characterize the time delay between two channels uh, of a software defined radio receiver, and similar to ours, they can uh, easily measure 10 picosecond delays with sub uh, picosecond standard deviation. 
Now, this all works very well with analog device and no front end for the XTRX. We've seen that uh, it's not so easy. And uh, that actually uh, asks for some uh, performance question on the XTRX because if you want to do some long duration correlation for, for example, extracting a weak signal from noise uh, by uh, long integration, you lower the, uh, as would be done by averaging, you lower the noise and you accumulate coherently energy on the correlation peak. Well, due to the drift that we've seen, like uh, uh, the 200 picosecond over 15 second integration duration, if you were to work at 1.57 gigahertz, which is the GPS L1 carrier frequency, 200 picoseconds is 110 angular uh, phase, uh, phase uh, rotation, which will uh, lower your uh, coherent accum uh, energy accumulation capability and even for direction of arrival if you had some long integration duration you would uh, degrade your uh, direction of arrival measurement capability so as a conclusion to this whole uh, presentation this is the actual architecture that we are uh, investigating where multiple software defined radio can be looking at different uh, frequency bands uh, for example in GNSS L1 L5 and L2 uh, uh, are all in very different uh, carrier uh, ranges, well beyond the bandwidth of each software defined radio receiver, but by uh, pr um, uh, frequency shifting using a local oscillator, uh, the incoming signal and sampling with multiple software defined radio receiver with one channel connected to the radio frequency signal and the other channel connected to our pseudo-random uh, spectrum spread information from the FPGA, we can synchronize all these software defined radio receivers and realign the samples that e despite they were collected at very different frequency ranges. In case of radar, having multiple frequency bands increases the range resolution by increasing the bandwidth of recorded signal, assuming that the transmitter is located, uh, all transmitters are located at the same location, as is often the case, for example, for digital video broadcast uh, signals. So with that, I thank you for your attention and hope you will enjoy reproducing this experiment by yourself. Thank you.